Our next speaker is a leader who has crisscrossed continents and engaged with people in many different cultures and will deliver an address entitled, Vision, to Rome and on to Spain, taking the Apostle Paul's aspirations in his letter to the Romans. Bishop Edward Kagey, resident bishop of the Eurasia Episcopal Area in the Northern Europe and Eurasia Central Conference of the United Methodist Church, was born in Alma-Ata, Kazakhstan. Kagey studied hydraulic engineering at Bauman Moscow State Technical University, graduating in 1993. That same year, he began to study at the Moscow United Methodist Theological Seminary. He would go on to receive a Master of Divinity degree from Emory University's Candler School of Theology in Atlanta and a Doctor of Ministry degree in 2010 from Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, D.C. He was ordained as a United Methodist elder in 2001. Just before his election to the episcopacy, Kagey was pastor of the Raduga United Methodist Church in Moscow and assistant to the bishop since 2005. Bishop Kagey has a passion for reaching those around the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Would you join me in welcoming Bishop Edward Kagey? Sisters and brothers, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a great honor and privilege for me to share my message with you today as you gather together at the global gathering of Wesleyan Covenant Association, Go Global. I am grateful to Reverend Keith Boyette for the invitation to participate. I wish I could be there with you in person but the pandemic reality is still very hard. So I am grateful for the technology that enables us to stay connected around the world. Let me begin with a story. In 1725, Peter the Great of the Russian Empire had a vision to send ships to the Kamchatka Peninsula, to Russia's far east in order to explore Russian geog geography and create new maps, learn whether Asia and North America are connected by land and to explore the western shores of North America. So in 1725, he ordered an expedition led by Vitus Bering. Born in Denmark and trained in the Netherlands, Vitus Bering became a respected leader of the Russian fleet. Peter the Great's vision became his vision. He was very enthusiastic to start his voyage and to explore the Kamchatka Peninsula and all the islands around it. So he led two expeditions to the peninsula. During his first expedition, Bering spent two years just traveling by land from St. Petersburg in the west to Akhotsk city in the far east. He had to travel by foot, on horses, on small boats, survive the Siberian winter, and all the challenges of travel of that time. For those of you in America, you might think of Lewis and Clark, except Bering's expedition was just getting started once he reached the Pacific Ocean. His team then needed to build a ship. It took about one and a half year to do so. Finally, Bering and his intrepid companions were able to begin exploring the sea. They discovered that Asia and North America are not connected by land. Today, we know of the Bering Strait, the narrow marine gateway between Russia and North America. In our Google Maps, we can find the Bering Sea and discover that its waters reach the shores of Kamchatka Peninsula and the shores of Alaska. After his first expedition, Bering had to travel back to St. Petersburg and give an extensive report about the benefits of trade with America, the richness of the Siberian land, and his vision for a new expedition to the Kamchatka Peninsula. His vision to explore new lands and seas just got bigger. He already had a plan for his second expedition. 
Sisters and brothers, when I was reading about Vitus Bering, I couldn't help but think about the Apostle Paul. They both traveled a lot, by foot, horses and sheep, experienced storms and many challenges. They both had a vision. They both were fully committed and died implementing their vision. One wanted to explore Kamchatka and create new maps. Another wanted to travel to the end of the world to share good news of Jesus Christ. Vision inspires people. It is like a burning bush inside your heart that keeps making your heart strangely warm. It pictures the future that you want to build. Some people are lucky to see their vision become a reality in their lifetime. People like Sergei Karolyov, who built the Soviet Union's space program and then put Yuri Gagarin into outer space, the first human being to leave our planet almost exactly 60 years ago. And the people at NASA who sent Neil Armstrong to the moon. I am inspired by these people. In the early 1990s, I had a vision to learn the English language. I was inspired by an American missionary in Moscow who led a Bible study for us. I dreamed that one day I would understand my new American friends without interpreters. Wow! But my English at that time was non-existent. Or maybe just a bit better than Russian President Boris Yeltsin at that time. We had an anecdote about uh, two presidents meeting together, US President Bill Clinton and Russian President Boris Yeltsin. So they meet together and Bill Clinton decided to talk privately with Boris Yeltsin in English without interpreter. So Bill Clinton comes to Boris and says, so Boris, uh, tell me, how is the economy in Russia? If you describe it in one word, and Boris Yeltsin says, good. And then Bill Clinton says, okay, okay, Boris. So what if you describe it in two words? And Boris Yeltsin says, not good. So my English was a, on a similar level. But I was very motivated to use my gifts and resources to study it day and night. Literally, I memorized English words even in my sleep. Some of my relatives laughed at me as they drank their beer and played the cards. It was tough, but it was my personal vision that became a reality. And I thank God today that I can share the good news of Jesus Christ with you in English. So what is vision and why is it so important to our Methodist movement both collectively and individually? Based on what I learned from many smart people, let me offer you my current definition of a vision. Vision is a God-given picture of a future that inspires you to use your gifts and resources for its realization. The Apostle Paul had a vision from God to visit Rome and then travel to Spain so he could share the good news of Jesus Christ with people there. He used his gifts and resources to make this vision a reality. He traveled a lot. He wrote letters. He preached the gospel and defended his faith before many. He also faced persecution, false gods, accusations, and death threats. If he had social media, he would have received all the ugly comments we can imagine today. So Paul had a vision to go to Spain. At that time, it was considered to be the end of the known world. In Latin, the end of the world is translated as Finisterre. I am inspired by Apostle Paul and his vision. The Holy Spirit continues to fulfill that vision through us today. Who will go global and make it a reality? In his letter to Romans, 
Paul wrote, since I don't have any place to work in these regions anymore, and since I've wanted to come to see you for many years, I'll visit you when I go to Spain. I hope to see you while I'm passing through. And I hope you will send me on my way there, after I have first been re-energized by some time in your company. What lessons can we learn from Paul and his vision today? First, salvation is for all nations, even to the end of the world. Finisterre. Sisters and brothers, I am a Methodist Christian today because of many passionate visionaries who believe that salvation is for all people, all nations. 30 years ago, Russia was a pretty uncomfortable place to visit and felt for many like the end of the world. Not enough food in grocery stores, crazy inflations every day, anxiety and chaos, and a toilet paper shortage. I was a college student witnessing the collapse of the Soviet Union and long lines of people standing just to buy basic food. But thanks to many United Methodists from the United States, Europe, Africa, and Korea, we experience God's own power for salvation for all who have faith in God. That power of salvation became evident to us as Methodist Christians share their global vision with us. And God's vision became our own vision. Let us continue to go global and fulfill this vision. Second, we have a vision for the transformation of life. In Romans, Paul writes, the free gift of Christ isn't like Adam's failure. If many people died through what one person did wrong, God's grace is multiplied even more for many people with the gift of the one person, Jesus Christ, that comes through grace. Paul not only preached and taught transformation, he exemplified it. From persecutor of the church to the apostle to the, for the Gentiles, and from a man of one nation to the preacher of good news to the end of the world. The famous Anglican bishop and Pauline theologian N.T. Wright lamented one day. He said, wherever St. Paul went, there was a riot. Wherever I go, they serve tea. Sisters and brothers, God has a vision for us transformational leaders to go global. And that means we cannot stay the same anymore. We are in God's mission of transforming life. Third, Jews and Gentiles live together in the early church. Paul, a Jew, took the gospel to the Gentiles. We must remember the vision that God has for us, to share the good news with all people, people beyond the walls of our church. John Wesley was a great example of going outside the walls of the church ministering to the poor, uneducated, and unchurched. Who are these people for us today? Perhaps immigrant workers, people of another ethnic group or class, a Generation Z, people who are not like us. I had my own negative experience of the Christian church even when I was an atheist. When I was 18 years old, I was searching for meaning in life and tried to understand God. How do you do that? You go to church. I visited several churches in Moscow. Imagine that in several of them, I was told to go away because I was not ethnically Russian or Slavic. Not a very good start for the meaning of life. Where do I go then, if I am Korean-Russian? God had a plan for me, 
and I was invited to the Moscow United Methodist Church. It was a wonderful multicultural community in Christ. This was a church as Paul envisioned it 2,000 years ago. I was blessed to meet people from Russia, North and South Korea, the United States, Liberia, Iran, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan, all in one church. As I traveled in the Eurasia Episcopal area today, I see God's power for salvation that brings students from Pakistan and India together to worship in our Methodist Church in Kyrgyzstan. It is God's power for salvation that transforms people and brings together Russian and African students in our Methodist churches in Russia. We are truly sisters and brothers in Christ. Let your light shine. Don't let the noise of social media and politics of fear extinguish your light, your friendship, your multicultural community of faith. By living this life together, we make God's global vision a reality. In conclusion, let me say this. Vitus Bering did not stop after his first expedition to the Kamchatka Peninsula. He wanted to go global again, explore the new lands and sea, and make new maps. Before his second expedition, Bering had to spend six years to prepare for his voyage, overcome bureaucracy, and build two ships, which he named St. Peter and St. Paul. Those are cool names. Finally, in 1740, they started to sail into the sea. They experienced storms and fogs, diseases, and many challenges of travel. But they would reach Alaska and many new islands, which we can find on our maps today. Vitus Bering died during his second expedition in 1741 on the island, which would later be named after him. His life and his vision inspired thousands of people to explore our world. The Apostle Paul did not stop after his first missionary journey. God's vision was bigger than just going to Cyprus and Asia Minor. He goes on his second missionary journey to Macedonia and Achaia. Then a third missionary journey where he spent three years in Ephesus. Now, that's the right discipleship program. And after these extensive journeys, he finally goes to Rome, but not as a free man, but as a prisoner, a prisoner for Christ, the apostle to the Gentiles. Sisters and brothers, God's global vision is so big that God expects one billion Christians today to continue actively sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Together with the Apostle Paul, we can preach and live out these three principles. First, salvation for all nations, to the end of the world, finis terre. Second, transformation of life. And third, Jews and Gentiles together in one church. Let us continue with Paul to share God's vision for the whole world. Let us find our Rome and Spain. Finisterre. Let's go global. May God bless you.